I'm getting nothing there. I'm going to try with a scalpel blade down this long side, just applying some gentle pressure, see if it'll push the label across. I don't think I can repeat the trick on this side. That's very, very, very stubborn. Just giving it a wiggle in the hope that it'll some of that solvent will get down under the edge. It's just not moving at all. There's absolutely nothing happening. Yeah, I heard something then. I wonder if something's moved. I think that's moving. I think that's coming adrift there. I think from the centre. Yeah, it looks like it's moving at the the end. Here we go. It's popped. Well, the adhesive is slightly softened by the acetone, but that's all. Okay, well, that's, that's that bit done. I'm going to take the front control rings off the shutter so I can lift the connecting pinion from the control rings to the lower meter drum out of the way. Let's take that pinion out. This one here is what I'm thinking of. Otherwise when you lift the front of it tends to pull the pinion away which would be a nuisance if you weren't committed to restringing the meter. I'll get these four screws out of the front plate. Three of them of course are easy to get here. The fourth one is visible only through here. Which is why that plate has to come off. It's lifting off. Okay, so we've got our front plate off. Let's recover that loose screw. See if there are any suggestions as to why that shutter should be misbehaving. No, it's certainly the problem is internal in the shutter, nothing external here.
All right, well, there's a lot of work to be done here. First, I'll recover these washers. The early cameras only had eight washers in these positions, two in each position. Later cameras had three in each position. They're cup-shaped dish washers and they're used to so you can adjust the depth of the uh, from the front plate to the film plane. To have that meter cord off. Now this is an early camera. Not the earliest, as I've already said, the earliest ones only had the meter run to f2.8. This is an early camera because this is the adjustment for the meter cord. The later ones had a sprung loaded lever there. This one you had to manually adjust it to take the slack out of the cord. Now that's down as far as it would go, so that's as much slack as you could possibly take out of the uh, meter cord there. These bits. Right, so we swing this up, we can swing that out of the way. Recover this spring straight away because otherwise it'll fall off and you'll never know where the hell it went. We can lift out this piece, this plastic shroud, and then lift out this piece, this baffle. That baffle's important. If you haven't got that baffle, you end up with a, a, a hot spot on the centre of the film. It's, it's where light bounced from somewhere else and you end up with an overexposed spot in the middle. From memory. Three screws hold this plate in position. And with these three screws out, that plate will come down and with it, the rangefinder arm. We can swing that out. Here's the rangefinder arm. There's a small washer, sometimes one at each side. This one's got two at one end. And here's the transfer shaft. Now this is held in place by this, so you can't get this shaft out without taking the other out. There's no need to take that out of the body. And that just leaves us with some pretty straightforward stuff here. Tripod socket screw is tight. That goes against nature. They're a bit rusty. That's the little aluminium, aluminium insert. That's where your film cassette sits in there. It doesn't need to be cleaned. That's, that's fine. The film advanced stuff. We want all this out. Just spent five minutes searching the room only to discover the screwdriver was hiding behind something. the gear off the top, the washer, that drive dog should lift off, that piece, that piece, that piece. that screw out, recover the spring from it, put that carefully to one side where it won't get lost. Put the screw, the spacer and the little uh, ratchet pull and a single screw here. Take the screw out of the release lever that's quite loose. I bet that adjustment wasn't wonderful. 
take the release lever out, recover the spring from the base of that before it gets lost or damaged. The lock lever. Let's re recover, remove that circlip and its return spring. The lock lever should come out of the body. Okay, the rewind button needs to come off next. And of course there are special pliers for that. Tight. The washer, put the spring to one side, put the button in there. The single screw drives the sprocket or couples the sprocket shaft and the sprocket together here. Take out the sprocket the top film advance bush came out and here's the clutch take that apart here's our sprocket the rewind button catch I'll just unhook the spring from that undo the screw Put the spring carefully to one side and three screws hold this film advance lever in place. This is very gummy, it's probably got very sticky old dried grease in it um, and the screws are loose that holds it to the base plate. Yeah, they're all loose. Alright, yeah, that, oh, that grease is, oh, that's nasty. That's just like glue. Take out the, take out the film take up spool, recover the metal bush that can go through the cleaner. That's pretty much the body stripped down as far as we need to go, except I don't like the look of the leatherette on that back door. So to make that easier to work on, I'm going to take the door off the camera. Since we've got the leatherette off the front of the camera, it's easy to access these screws that hold the hinge to the body. If it was a Retina 3C camera, you wouldn't usually want to disturb that leatherette because you don't usually need to. And uh, so you would, if you wanted to take the door off, it's easy to knock the pin out, typically. Although, the last camera of that sort that I saw, that pin wouldn't come out. It was well and truly rusted in. Now see if I can get this leatherette up. What I'm doing is I want to get this off completely because there's dice bumps under there and that is because of corrosion underneath the leatherette. The leatherette's a bit fragile here because it's got made in Germany embossed into the leatherette which will have uh, somewhat compromised the strength of that leatherette. It's quite deeply embossed. The leatherettes are always stuck most strongly at an edge like that, that corner. It tends to be where you'll have the most trouble. 
and that's not really making much of a move there Oh, it's stuck pretty well. Typically speaking, if you can get the leatherette loose from that point, this piece is not much trouble. But I'm by no means convinced with this one. I'll try a bit of naphtha under there, see if it makes any impression at all. This leatherette's unlikely to ever have been off the camera. Because you, you never need to take it off the surface of the camera. I'm only taking it off here because the leatherette itself has got a fault. It's got Zeiss bumps under it. Yeah, it is lifting off better now, now that I'm, you know, got round that corner. It's got a, a gooey sort of a feel to it, so the adhesive is not dried out, it's still doing its job. And it's not giving up lightly. You can hear it cracking away. It's some parts that are not stuck or stuck badly, some of it's stuck very well. Yeah, you get little localized patches that are stuck really firmly. You can't rush this process. Oh, look, I'll peel that leatherette back slightly. That's all corrosion. That's like salty rubbish there. That's um, break, that, that's the aluminium corrosion there. On the leatherette, you can see that white stuff. That's all that, that, that rubbish. So that corrosion will effectively break the hold that the adhesive has on the leatherette. But it can be very uneven. Alright, I'm up to the corner now, so I've got the same problem I had at the other end, except I'm working from the, from the long side. I 
the illiterates just breaking on that corner. Now the litherite will have stuck differently at the ends, particularly that end where it's chromed, uh, chromed brass on that hinge. The adhesive tends to behave differently on different substrates. Oh, that just came off. Okay, that's a good result. So, all this filth has to come off here. All of those crusty bits you see there correspond to bumps on the outside surface. That's all going to be cleaned. And the back cover here, well, that. That crunchy crap all has to come off back to clean metal. Um, yes, I'm doing that, scraping that with the back edge of my scalpel. I'll get that all as clean as I possibly can and then I'll clean this with solvent to get rid of anything else that's left on there. This isn't a very exciting part. You don't need to watch me struggle with this. You're probably bored to death with what I've already done. While I've got other stuff percolating away in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and so forth and the body's been cleaned down, leatherettes have been cleaned down I thought I'd have a look at this shutter find out what's going on with this because it's a bit of a mystery so we'll start delving into this and see if we can find out what's going on so there's four screws down here hold the shutter to this front assembly. The one down in here is a bit hard to see. In fact it's impossible to see so it'll work by touch to find those screw heads. Okay, so that's the four screws loose. Well, I think four screws are loose. Yes, they're loose. Okay. What else have we got to do here? We've got my uh, rangefinder coupling here, which I haven't taken off yet. So we'll do that. You can do that by drawing it out the front. There's a collet on the back. But if I draw the rangefinder ring stuff out the front, now we, we'll do a count of these components. We should have five pieces in all. I think. What do we got? We've got four there. Is that a lot? Let's have a quick look at this. Where's the collet? Oh, it's still stuck in there. So these are the components, and they go in, in this order. These pieces are quite easy to lose. Make a point of not losing them because finding spares is very, very difficult. I'm just going to reassemble this lot so that it's all in one piece and I'm less likely to end up losing anything. This lot's a bit greasy, someone's gone to the trouble of greasing that up with the crap like grease, which was probably unnecessary. 
Right, so here we're going to lift this off now. We've got a flash contact here. Is a plastic thing which has just helpfully popped off for me without even having to undo the screw. There's a little plastic connector there with a screw in the side of it. You use that to tighten the flash connection up. I'll leave that there for the moment. The front we'll deal with separately. Let's have a look at this shutter. I'm interested to see what's going on with this. So we've got three screws hold the shutter to the front to assembly, the lens mount. lift that off. Here we've got a little ball, a little detent ball for the shutter speeds. Be careful not to lose that. Those three screws will put to one side. That's just the shim plate, put that to one side and here's the shutter itself. Well what's going on with this? I'll try cocking that and we'll see how far it goes. What happens when we try cocking that shutter? Alright, nothing exciting. Let's take this off and find out why those blades are jammed open. Take the shutter speed settings cam plate off. Let's take out that cocking cam there. And take out this. Here's our main cam. It's not round at the rest position. Those blades are stuck in the open position. They have not run, the shutter has not run down. Why has the shutter not run down? So it's cocked, but it's failed to run down. Well, let's move a few obstructions. Let's see if we can get to the root of this problem. Out with the self timer. I'm going to have to unhook that main spring that's been sitting there and it's even in quite good condition considering we we'll lift out that main cam the retard gear train what's that like well it's pretty sluggish at returning but it does return let's have that out Why won't this return? Is the B lever not lifting up? No, it's not that. Okay, so let's have this stuff out. This is the flash sink mechanism here. Be careful not to lose that spring. Because of the way this is jammed, it, I couldn't cock that and uh, relieve the tension on that spring. And the shutter release should lift out with that. Take out the flash contact. Take out that moving contact. Let's get that spring off. 